Hello, Vital Sign. Today we're going to talk about simplex graphs and the simplex operation. First, to understand simplex graphs, we'll need to take a look at clicks. In our daily lives, when we hear the word click, it refers to a group of people that have similar interests and spend time together. However, in graph theory, a click is a subset of vertices in an undirected graph such that every vertex connects to every other vertex in that subset. In other words, every two vertices in the click are adjacent. Vertices A, B, C, and E do not form a click because E is not connected to A, B, or C. The set A, B, C, D is not only a click, it is a four click, meaning that it is a click of four vertices. Note that there are also smaller clicks, ABC, ABD, BCD, and ACD are all the three clicks in this graph. Each pair of connected vertices in a graph, represented by an edge, is itself a click, a two click. Here are all the two clicks for this graph listed out. We even consider each individual vertex to be a click, specifically a one click. For some purposes, we can define the graph formed from the empty set of vertices to be a zero click. Now that you're familiar with clicks, let's see how we can apply them to create a graph operation, the simplex. The simplex of an undirected graph G is itself a graph with one vertex for each click in G. Two vertices in the simplex graph are connected if their corresponding clicks in the original graph G differ by the presence or absence of a single vertex. For example, in this graph, the simplex graph vertex corresponding to the click AB would be linked to the vertex corresponding to the click ABC because the clicks AB and ABC differ only in the presence or absence of a single vertex, vertex C. However, simplex graph vertices corresponding to clicks like AB and AC will not be connected because AB includes vertex B and lacks vertex C and click AC includes vertex C and lacks vertex B. Looking at it this way, we see that they actually differ in the presence and absence of two different vertices, not one. So the vertices in our simplex graph corresponding to clicks AB and AC are not connected. This fact implies that simplex graph vertices corresponding to clicks of the same size in the original graph are not connected. As those vertices clicks, must differ by the presence or absence of at least two vertices if they are different clicks of the same size. Now that we have defined the simplex operation, we can find the simplex of this graph. First, let's list out all the clicks in this graph. We have one zero click. We also have three one clicks. One for each vertex in the graph, A, B, and C. We have three two clicks, the connected pairs AB, AC, and BC. And finally, we have one three click, ABC. That's a total of eight clicks, so the simplex graph will have eight vertices. Now let's determine which vertices connect to each other. The zero click differs from the one clicks by the presence of a single vertex. So the vertex corresponding to the zero click will be connected to each simplex vertex corresponding to a one click in the original graph. I'd like to point out that a vertex representing an end click, for example a one click, cannot be connected to a vertex representing an n minus two or n plus two click, for example a three click. As n clicks necessarily differ in the presence or absence of more than one vertex, when compared with n plus 2 or n minus 2 clicks. And again, a simplex graph vertex corresponding to an n click cannot be connected to any other simplex vertex corresponding to an n click.
because different end clicks differ in at least two vertices. Each must lack a vertex the other includes and include a vertex the other lacks, meaning they really differ in the presence and absence of two vertices. Thanks to those facts, we can move on from the zero click as it cannot be connected to any two clicks or higher. What about the one clicks? We already drew out their connections to the zero click, but what about their connections to the two clicks? Well, each simplex vertex corresponding to a one click will be connected to two two clicks. For example, the simplex vertex corresponding to the one click A in the original graph will connect to the simplex vertices corresponding to two click AB and two click AC in the original graph, as click A differs from click AB in the presence or absence of a single vertex, vertex B, and click A differs from click AC in the presence or absence of a single vertex C. Applying the same logic, we can connect the vertex representing one click B to those representing two clicks BC and AB, and then we can also connect the vertex representing one click C to those representing two clicks BC and AC. Now for the final connections in our simplex graph, those between the vertices representing two clicks, AB, BC, and AC, and the vertex representing the three click ABC. In this case, all of the vertices representing two clicks will connect to the vertex representing the three click ABC as click AB differs from click ABC in the presence or absence of vertex C. Click BC differs from click ABC in the presence or absence of the single vertex A and click AC differs from click ABC in the presence or absence of the single vertex B. And we're done. That is the simplex graph of the original graph. I can rearrange this without rewiring any edges so that the graph looks a little nicer. There we go. This is the same simplex graph, just rearranged so it's neater. Now, there's no reason we can't take more than one simplex. That is, we consider the simplex graph as our new base graph and take its simplex. And we could repeat this, taking a simplex over and over. Notice that a simplex graph always has more vertices, or in formal terms, a higher order than its original graph. Why? Because, since every vertex in the original graph is a one-click, there is a corresponding vertex in the simplex graph for every vertex in the original graph. Also, there is a vertex corresponding to the original graph's zero click. Together, this means that the simplex of a graph must have at least one more vertex than the original graph. For many graphs, it will have much more than one more vertex. Because remember that for each edge in the original graph, there is a vertex in the simplex graph. So clearly, as we take the simplex of a graph over and over again, our simplex graphs order or number of vertices will increase. The number of edges, formerly known as the size of a simplex graph, is also greater than that of its original graph, as each edge, really a two-click in the original graph, corresponds to a unique vertex in the simplex graph with two edges, one to each one-click simplex vertex corresponding to the endpoint vertices of that edge in the original graph. Not only that, but the zero-click vertex in the simplex graph will connect to all of the one-click vertices in the simplex graph of which there are as many as there are vertices in the original graph. And of course, we can't forget the connections between higher-click vertices in the simplex graph. So not only does the order of our graphs increase as we take higher simplex graphs, but the size or number of edges also increases. What if I asked you to find the order and size of the fifth simplex of a graph? It sounds like a pretty difficult task, as you'd have to list out all of the clicks of the original graph, draw and connect the vertices of the first simplex graph, then list out all the first simplex graph's clicks, and draw and connect the vertices of the second simplex graph, and so on. 
However, there's actually a very simple formula that lets you find the order and size of the nth simplex of a graph, provided you can find the order and size of the first simplex graph by hand. The key is this. The first simplex of a graph has no clicks of order 3 or higher. In other words, its highest click is a 2-click. Why is that? Because simplex graphs are bipartite, meaning that we can separate their vertices into two distinct sets of vertices, U and V, where vertices in each set are only connected to vertices in the other set. That is, no vertices in set U are connected to other vertices in set U, and no vertices in set V are connected to other vertices in set V. The only connections are between vertices in different sets. How can we show this to be true for simplex graphs? Well, remember our discovery that simplex graph vertices corresponding to an end click in the original graph cannot be connected to those corresponding to clicks of the same size and cannot be connected to those corresponding to n minus 2 or n plus 2 clicks. This means that if we form a set of all simplex graph vertices corresponding to odd number clicks in the original graph, and form a set of all simplex graph vertices corresponding to an even number click in the original graph, we would have two independent sets of vertices where no even number click vertices are connected to other even number click vertices, and no odd number click vertices are connected to other odd number click vertices. Let me rearrange the graph again so you can see the bipartite structure of the simplex graph. Now that we know simplex graphs are bipartite, we can apply a property of bipartite graphs. There are no clicks of order 3 or greater. This is because there are no 3 clicks in bipartite graphs, and if there were to be 4 clicks, 5 clicks, etc., there would have to be 3 clicks too, as subgraphs of those larger clicks. Then why is it that there are no 3 clicks in bipartite graphs? Feel free to pause the video and work out why there are no 3 clicks in bipartite graphs. Let's suppose that we have some bipartite graph of 5 vertices with no edges. Now let's try to build a 3 click in this bipartite graph. We need at least one vertex connecting to another vertex, right? So that means we'll need to choose one vertex from each set of our bipartite graph as only vertices in different sets can connect to each other. Now to finish the three click, we'll need one vertex from one of our sets that can connect both to our first and second vertices. Notice that this is impossible, regardless of which vertex we choose to connect, as it would be connected to one vertex in its set, violating our rule for bipartite graphs. This means that bipartite graphs have no three clicks. And because of that, they have no 4, 5, or higher clicks. Since simplex graphs are bipartite, they too have no clicks of order 3 or higher. This is a powerful statement, as it lets us write a simple recursive formula, well actually two formulas as you'll see in a little bit, for the order and size of nth simplex graphs. Starting with our base graph, once we find the first simplex graph, we can be assured that the first simplex graph only has two clicks, one clicks, and zero clicks due to the fact that it is a bipartite graph. And using what we found earlier, we know that the second simplex graph will have one vertex for each edge in the first simplex graph, one vertex for each vertex, or one click, in the first simplex graph, and one vertex corresponding to the zero click in the first simplex graph. That means that the order or number of vertices of the second simplex graph equals the order of the first simplex graph plus the size or number of edges of the first simplex graph plus one. And notice how this formula holds true for any n greater than or equal to one since the simplex of a simplex still satisfies the properties that gave rise to this formula, namely the absence of clicks of order 3 or higher. Now, 
This formula alone will not give us the order of an nth simplex graph because it still depends on our knowing both the order and the size of our previous simplex graph. That means we need a similar recursive formula for the size of an nth simplex graph. Then we'll be able to let them work together, generating the size and order of each simplex graph one step at a time so that the next size and order can be found. Let's find the second formula for the size of a simplex graph now. Again, once we have our first simplex graph, we are free of three clicks, so we can focus on lower ordered clicks. When we add the vertex corresponding to the zero click to our second simplex graph, it will connect to the vertices corresponding to the one clicks of the previous simplex graph meaning that we have just added as many edges as the number of vertices of our previous simplex graph. Also, each existing edge in the first simplex graph will be doubled in the second simplex graph, serving as connections between vertices representing two clicks and one clicks. Since there are no higher clicks to connect to, we are done. We can now write a formula using this information. The size of the n plus 1 simplex graph equals the sum of the order of the nth simplex graph plus twice the size of the nth simplex graph. The neat thing is that both recursive formulas only depend upon the order and size of the previous simplex graph. So as long as we have the values for our first simplex graph, these formulas will extend our knowledge of order and size to the second simplex graph, and then using that information, extend our knowledge of order and size to the third simplex graph, and so on. It is possible to program a loop using these two recursive formulas to find the order and size of the nth simplex of a graph, provided you know the order and size of the first simplex of that graph. To finish the video, I'd like to show you some interesting sequences that arise when we take repeated simplexes of graphs. Here are the sequences for the order of nth simplex graphs of the completely disconnected graph on 1, 2, 3, and 4 vertices. Note how the sequence cycles through even, even, odd terms. There's a lot more to be said about simplex graphs, so if you find these graphs interesting, I've left some links in the description for you to learn more about them. Also, I will be making more videos on simplex graphs in the future, so stay tuned. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Have a great day.